When you think of someone who is homeless, what do they look like? My name's Rebecca Temple and I'm currently homeless. I've got an undergraduate degree in psychology and I've recently been accepted into an honours program. I didn't choose to be homeless, no one chooses to be homeless. I've had to flee my home due to family violence. Rebecca is not alone. Public housing is in crisis across Australia. In Victoria, there's 33,000 people on the waiting list for public housing. Nationally, there's around 200,000 people on the waiting list for social housing. The line for public housing is so long, passing Apple fans instinctively stop and join it, thinking a new iPhone is out. <laughs> the number of rough sleepers in Australia is skyrocketing and we're punching above our weight internationally. We have nearly twice as many people living on the streets as England does, despite having less than half of their population. We're beating the Poms! <laughs> and all it took was some true blue Aussie neglect. Now, social housing makes up just 4% of all housing in Australia, compared to 17% in England, and the results speak for themselves. Melbourne's facing a homeless crisis just days before thousands of visitors arrive for the start of the Australian Open. Dominating Melbourne's Herald Sun this morning, Grand Slum, a homeless street camp has engulfed the Australian Open's main gateway. The paper says visitors have been faced with aggression and drug use. That is disgusting. Tennis fans should not be abused on their way to the game. They should be abused by Nick Kyrgios when they get there. <laughs> but the problem wasn't just what they were shouting, it was how they looked. The homeless camp has been growing daily, with many locals saying the rough sleepers give the city a bad look. The thing is, it does look ugly. It looks mm. terrible. It's the ugly side of homelessness. Oh, the ugly side of homelessness. Not like the beautiful side of homelessness you see glamorised on Instagram. <laughs> Thankfully, the media can play a crucial role in helping us understand a complex problem like this. If this sort of thing scares tourists off, that means less dollars in the local economy, it means less people paying taxes, less money in the government coffers, which means less money to do things about homelessness mm. and housing. Yes, Joe Hildebrand, homelessness is the fault of homeless people, <laughs> keeping us from helping homeless people. And if there were fewer homeless people, there'd be more money to help the homeless. <laughs> you know, I think Joe could have done with a bit more empathy. If only he'd seen Studio 10 in 2015, where that nice Joe Hildebrand chap spent the day dressed up as a homeless man, for some reason, to a soundtrack by Phil Collins. <laughs> I felt really ashamed and I felt really embarrassed and obviously I had no reason to. People who are genuinely homeless have no reason to. But it did really, really feel like that. The rest of us can only imagine what it's like being forced to live this hell day in, day out, and we pray that we're never on Studio 10. <laughs> Authorities knew that the best way to respond to non-pretend homelessness, or homelessness, was with understanding and compassion. It's not an offence to be homeless. Um, it's not a very good look what's, what's down there at Flinders Street, but it's not an offence to sit or sleep on the street. There are cities around the world where they, they simply bundle homeless people up and ship them out. I, I'd hate to think that we were ever that sort of city. We need to address the problem, not just do a cosmetic job. It was a remarkably principled stand from the Lord Mayor, matched only by the remarkable speed with which it was abandoned. Street sweep. Melbourne councillors vote to effectively ban homeless people from sleeping rough in the city. It is not illegal to be homeless, but we can't have these large encampments of bedding, tents, suitcases, backpacks, milk crates, office furniture, taking up whole parts of the footpath. See, it's not illegal to be homeless. It's just illegal to have anything that would help you survive being homeless. <laughs> and if you want your stuff back, you'll have to pay a fee. And if you start begging for the money to get your stuff back, in much of Australia, that's illegal and can result in fines you couldn't possibly afford and up to 12 months in prison. And any money that you make begging to pay the fines gets taken away from you because it's technically the proceeds of crime. This all falls under the little-known Now We're Just Fucking With You Act of 1996. <laughs> and this is a special kind of bullshit. We're punishing people for being homeless and it's not something they have a say in. Surely there must be a permanent solution. The biggest and most significant factor that prevents homelessness is social housing. So until we grasp the fact that we need to diversify our housing market, we are going to see visible homelessness in our streets. The solution to people needing houses is houses. <laughs> it seems simple. Too simple.
No, it really is just that simple. <laughs> and it's cheaper. A recent two-year study found that tenants in supportive housing use $13,000 less in government-funded services compared to when they were homeless. And that includes the cost of the housing. It also more than halved criminal offending and the need for mental health services. All levels of government need to come together to fix this problem. It'll be better for the homeless, cheaper for the taxpayer, and best of all, it means that scenes like this will be a thing of the past. Oh. <laughs>